If you're a pickleball player and you want to understand how to cover the X when you're playing, stay tuned for this video. All aboard! Hello, my name is Tony Roy from Into Pickle and We Are Pickleball. We are pickleball professionals dedicated to your pickleball improvement. This morning I was having a conversation with a good friend of mine, Pete, and we were talking about pickleball strategy, court coverage, those types of issues. And we were talking about Respect the X as a concept uh, that we talk a lot about at Into Pickle and We Are Pickleball. And I mentioned to him it was one of the early videos that we had done at Into Pickle, and it's one of the things that we're known for. I used to go to tournaments and players would look at me and go, Respect the X, and I'd be like, yeah, respect that X. So I figured it was time to get, out of the, get to the board, explain it to you on the board. It's a, it's a much better way to really explain and really see how the X works. What I've done on the board is I've placed an X on there, as you can see with these blue lines. And so as you can, if you can see, you can see the X on there, the X connects players along the diagonal, meaning this player is essentially connected to this player and this player is essentially connected to this player. So the players on the opposite, opposite ends of their X respective X line will basically be connected as they play. This X, you can think about it as the big X and we're going to look at the small X in a, in a little bit to explain how it works when you're up at the non-body zone line because it, it applies there as well. And we're also gonna talk about the defensive X. That's really important. That's an area where a lot of players make mistakes is breaking the defensive X. That'll cost you a ton of points. And we're gonna talk about when you can and should perhaps break the X. So let's look at the, let's look at a, at a sort of an easy example of how the X works. What we're gonna do is we're gonna set up uh, this team up here as the serve team. And this team down here will be the return team. So. The blue team will be the serve team. The yellow team is the return team. What will happen, obviously, the serve, the serve occurs, and you have a return to serve. Let's put the return to serve along this X line. We'll make it a little closer to the, to the middle because this is a common situation that you see in a lot, a lot of games at all levels. And obviously, this player will move this player up there. Assuming this player knows how to play, they'll move up. So the question now is, who takes this ball on the blue team? Remember, the ball came from in this direction, right? Who takes the ball on this team? When you have two right-handed players, it's pretty common for this player to slide over like this and take this third shot drop or third shot, third shot. Let's call it a drop for purposes of, of what we're doing now. Let's assume they're going to hit a third shot drop. So this player slides over to take this third shot drop. This is breaking the X. Because if you follow the X here, and we're going to get into that in a minute, you know, what it would look like when you respect it, this player should be the one taking the third shot, not this player. Let's talk about three negative consequences of this player coming over here to take the third shot. One, one negative consequence is you have this court now is open, right? So I have an open court. That's pretty light on the screen, but well, you know what I'm talking about. This is the open court over here. So this court is now open and available to, uh, to attack by the yellow team. Actually, let me get a darker marker here and mark it out for you. You can see it more clearly. So that, that should be more visible. So you have this opening on the court here, right? Because this player has now pulled, pulled hammer herself across this way. This court's now available to the yellow team to attack. That's problem number one. Problem number two is a mechanical problem. What happens is, what happens is the player who is, this player who's hitting this ball, even though it's their forehand because it's a right-handed player, this player will be reaching away from their body like this to hit the ball. So they're going to be reaching away like this. That's a much harder way to hit a third shot. When I'm reaching away like this, I'm off balance, I'm reaching out away for the ball. So this player is going to have a more difficult shot to hit or, or a more difficult mechanical shot to hit. The other problem, and this is one that, a lot of players just don't don't recognize they don't realize it when this happens is this player now is pinned basically this player is stuck and has to wait for this player to hit the shot before this player can move so those are three three negative things that happen when this player breaks the x in this case and comes over and takes the third shot and a quick side note here forehand in the middle isn't always the best shot. Sometimes it might be. And we'll, we'll, well, well, maybe not in this video, another video I'm gonna talk to you about that. This video will be too long if we talk about that. But forehand in the middle is not always the applicable rule or not always the answer when you're out on the court. 
Respect the X here is much more important than forehand in the middle in this situation for the three reasons I just explained. Let's talk about what happens when you respect the X. So let's take this, let's take this square out of here. Now let's look at what happens when this team respects the X on the third shot drop. The first thing is this player now is able to hit an easier shot. So the ball is coming into their, the backhand, right? So there's a backhand shot, but the ball is traveling into the player. What that means is the player has a better foundation there and can hit the shot from here, right? So easier to hit a shot from here than to hit a shot all the way extended out like this, right? So the player, this player is now hitting a nice shot here like this with a, with a better body position and an easier third shot drop. Second thing is this court is not opened. You don't open this quarter necessarily, allowing the yellow team to attack. The third thing is this player now is free to roam, if you will. Meaning, if this player hits a, a really nice third shot drop, drops it in a, a nice spot here where, the, um, where this player is in trouble. So let's assume this player hits a nice third shot drop over here. This player now slides over. Maybe this player is in a little bit of trouble. This player can come up, be aggressive, and attack. Whereas if you remember before, when, when this player was coming over to take the third shot drop, right, this player was, was pinned back there and couldn't do anything. And you can watch video after video and you're going to see this happening. When the player comes across and takes a third shot drop, their partner is pinned behind the baseline, putting them in a bad spot where they can't take advantage of opportunities. So this is a pretty clear situation here with a return coming here where this player, if you're going to respect the X, which we recommend you do, where the player here on the on the right side here, which in this case happens to be the server, uh, would be the player who's going to take the shot. And on you're gonna take the third shot drop because you're respecting the X. Let's bring it up to the to the non-volley zone and take a look at the small X a little bit, talk about that a little bit. We did a video on this, I'll link to it above, uh, where we, we actually did a game breakdown. We did a game breakdown on the small X, and we show you a situation where, in that case, the ball was traveling across like this, right? We're going to focus on the blue team. The ball was traveling across like this. And what happened was this player, the first time it came across, the player laid off it and didn't do anything. Let it go by, no problems. In the very same rally, at the end of the rally, this player reached across the X, broke the X, and missed the shot. So the small X is bit same as the other X, basically, but it's smaller. So it'll look like this, right? And so the idea here is, when you have these balls that come into the middle, so let's focus on this team again being the, the, the one we're focusing on here. So let's say this, this player hits a ball that bounces here, right? So now it's this player hitting in this direction, okay? If the ball is coming in this direction like this, right? Then the player who should hit this ball, right? Is this player, not this player. And what happens is when this player hits the ball, it's the same thing to happen when the third shot drop. They have to reach away. They're potentially opening the court. The other player is kind of pinned behind them a little bit. Basically not pinned because they can't move forward, but kind of like it creates an awkward situation for this team. And usually the biggest problem is what happens is there's a mechanical error or a, a, there's a resulting shot error because if this player reaches away like this and the ball's coming this way, what will happen is it'll deflect off weird and you'll see an error there. So that's how the, how the small X works. Um, you know, and again, if you respect the X there, this ball here should be hit by this player, not by this player. Let's talk a little bit about the defensive X. It's, it's very similar to this, but that usually happens when you have like an attack situation where you have, let's say you have a slam. So this player is going to slam it. We'll keep the arrow going that way to, for consistency. And you have this player is behind, right? So this player is behind and in a, in a position to defend. And what will happen is this player will stick their paddle out and intercept that ball. It can happen the other way too, but basically it's, when the player who is in front of the attacker, right, so directly in front of the attacker, tries to intercept the ball that the player behind them along the X could more easily defend. So this is an example of using the X in a defensive setting, and you're gonna find that you're in much better shape, your team is in much better shape if you allow the player who is farthest back along the X axis, right, so that's this player, to defend that ball as opposed to reaching out with your paddle and trying to take that ball. All right, so those are the three kind of the big X, the small X, and the defensive X to give you some ideas of those things. We're gonna talk now about 
when is it appropriate to break the X. Before we do that, if you like this kind of breakdown, this kind of analysis, this kind of way of looking at the game and giving you a bigger picture of understanding pickleball, check us out at We Are Pickleball. This is what we do. Go to wearepickleball.com, join our mail list. You'll get notified when we send out these kind of videos on YouTube and things like that. And if you want to, you can join our success path inside We Are Pickleball and really improve your pickleball game. So let's talk about what we do to, uh, what we do when we want to break the X and maybe sometimes where we want to break the X. One of those is when you have a short return or serve, okay? And you have a particularly um, good attack by one of the players. So again, we're going to have the blue team be the serve team. The yellow team is the return team. I'm going to have a serve and let's assume a short return over here. Okay, so now I have a short return on this side. That's an attack opportunity for the blue team. In this situation, you have a situation where if this player, if you can pin this player back or attack this player and you're moving up like this and both of these players are right-handed and let's assume that their forehands are both better than their backhands. This is a case where you can break the X because you want to bring this forehand over here in an offensive manner. You want to bring the forehand over to attack a ball. In that case, this player is justified in breaking the X to attack that ball. And you'll understand a little more, I think, when we do the, the, the high poachable ball. But the concept here is it's not one of, of my ball, your ball. It's one of what's the best shot for blue and the best shot for blue here in this situation, again, assuming that, that this forehand is stronger than this backhand, would be for this forehand to come up and attack this ball, move up, and hopefully win a point. So as an example of breaking the X in a pickleball game to help you maximize your chances of winning. Another scenario is a high ball. So you have a situation where you have, let's say you have all four players up here, okay? And you have a ball... Now let's assume we have a ball traveling this way. Okay, so you have a, an attack of ball coming across this way. When it reaches here, it's not bouncing here, I'm just putting it here for a second to show you. When it reaches here, the ball, or let's say a little more this way, the ball is gonna be attackable. It's gonna be up in the air. Now, this player could let it go, right? So that this player could hit it. But this player, can hit it sooner normally, can hit it sooner and higher. And to, to, to illustrate a little more, let's pull this player back a little bit, right? Let's assume this player is coming in and this player is already up. I think you would agree that if you had to pick which player on the blue team should take this shot, particularly when I put them in this arrangement, it should be this player, even if it's their backhand. Because two things, one, the ball here will be higher than it is when it gets here. So it'll be more attackable. And the second thing is the ball here is closer to the net than it is here. So it is easier to get it over the net on, an, on a downward trajectory to attack. And the other reason is time. So the ball hit here robs the yellow team of time relative to the ball being here. So when you think about these sorts of things, you can break the X, but you want to break the X when it makes sense to break the X such as when you have an attackable ball from the base, you know, on a short return of serve and you want to come across and break that X, or when you have a, a situation like this where the ball is going to be, the ball is going to be better, you're better served by hitting it with this player, even though it's coming across to this player because of the timing of it and being able to hit the ball first. If you're serious about your pickleball improvement, consider adding the pickleball strategy or understanding the pickleball strategy by respecting the X. As you play games out there, notice when you're respecting the X or breaking the X, what are the consequences? Is one or the other helping you out better? That way you'll really understand how pickleball strategy can help you improve as a pickleball player. I'm going to link to some videos up here to help you continue learning. There's some game breakdowns and other material in here that will really help you continue to elevate your game if that's your objective. And if we can help you at all, help you achieve your pickleball objectives, our jam is to help you become the best pickleball player that you can be. Good luck out there.